What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering the Grounded Backyard Brawl semi-finals and finals. Now of course I did qualify for this and uh, it's been about a week since it took place because I had to recover from playing in it. But don't worry, I'm going to bring you the footage today, we're going to analyse it, break it down and I'll explain exactly what happened. Okay, so the first match we have was me versus Sir Similot. As you can see, Sir Similot straight away went for the Throne Spear, missed. Didn't do anything to me. My goal in this first round, since we started on a level playing field, was just to run around and loot as much as possible. As you can see, Sir Simot tried to cut off my looting path, but I just ran away, tried to avoid him, and uh, loot as much as possible, so I had the best chance at getting the best gear from the arena. Obviously, it's all luck-based, because the gear was randomly placed throughout the arena in this one, unlike the ones in the past where the better gear had been on the top layer and the not-so-good gear had been on the bottom. So I'm just running around here, gathering as much gear, looting as many chests as I can find, trying to find whatever the best weapon possible is from all of these chests. Then I take a second here to just equip some of my better armor. I throw on the assassin chest plate, which uh, is the best chest plate I had. I don't think I had a better helmet, so I'm just checking my inventory, putting some stuff on my hotbar, making sure I don't get hit. And then I pull out the termite axe, which I actually pulled from a chest, uh, so Simulot's using the Stinger Spear, which is, is, is an okay weapon, but it's not that strong. It's honestly better if you throw it. Uh, you're better off using a Tier 3 weapon like the Termite Axe, which I have. So um, I definitely have an advantage in melee combat, but um, obviously I'm on the other side of the world from the host. So it was uh, very, very difficult to block attacks. I don't think you'll ever see me get a triple perfect block in any of these rounds uh, because it's just simply impossible. Uh, I shoot the cameraman there by complete accident. Um, nearly killing him with one shot of the crossbow. And uh, I decide to back up from Sir Sim and just start playing a bit of ranged because I know with the ping that I have, it's very difficult to get in the melee attacks without getting hit. But I know I, uh, I've got a pretty good crossbow shot and ping doesn't really affect crossbows. Uh, now I have him really weak and he's just running away. Um, so I'm just trying to get a couple of punches in on him to finish him off. And there he goes. Round one goes to me. Just takes me two more punches and it finishes him off and kills him. So I'm 1-0 up going into it, and um, I'm, I'm prepared, you know, I'm ready for round two. So round two begins, and as you can see, we switched gear here. So Simulot now has the roly-poly helmet on with a regular uh, chest plate. I have uh, an assassin chest plate and a spider helmet. That's really good for stamina. Uh, I also keep the aphid slippers on throughout every fight because they're just so good for speed. It was a vital component for me to uh, avoid my enemies by using those slippers. They were really, really, really useful. As as the um, group stages were, this is obviously a first to three or best of five. So um, I'm currently 1-0 up. I need to win two more rounds in order to win. Here, I'm just playing range, trying to get some crossbow hits in because I know that um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat him in a crossbow fight. I think I had both the crossbows in, in this game. So I knew he couldn't use a crossbow against me. And my crossbow shots are really accurate, even on high ping. So I knew it was my best chance of getting him. Um, he gets stuck on the zip line in, in the menus there. So I just decide to hit him in the back with the termite axe. That's um, unlucky for him, you know. Those zip line menus can be a pain to get out of. So, uh, but I had to capitalize, you know. I had to make sure I hit him and as I was dropping down there, I didn't miss and I managed to land all my hits and kill him. Round three begins. I'm currently 2-0 up. So my goal is just to avoid him again, try and get some crossbow shots in to lower his health. And then once his health is lowered, go in for those melee attacks. As you can see here, I'm looting a chest. And then uh, as I come around the corner, he has the antlion greatsword. He starts swinging. The first hit misses. I jump over it. The second hit misses because I'm out of range. And the third hit, I turn and block. And it just goes through my shield and kills me. I don't think I was out of stamina here because I was busy looting a chest. So I must have recovered stamina while doing that. But um, it one hit kill me from full health. And uh, it goes to 2-1. Um, which, you know, it had me slightly worried, but I wasn't too worried because I thought, you know, I'm still, I'm still winning in this situation. I'm not behind and, uh, I just need to win one more round from the next two and then we're fine. Okay. We move on to round four. As you can see, again, just keeping the distance using the crow crossbow as much as possible. I then found this vantage point on top of the zip lines and just started to sit up here and use the crossbow because I knew he, uh, he couldn't get me from up there. He didn't have much in terms of ranged attack. So he's just kind of trying to drain all the arrows from my inventory at this point, which, to be honest, isn't a great strategy because eventually I will run out of arrows, but I'll probably land a few shots on him before I run out, you know? There was a lot of arrows in the arena. I had, like, maybe 30 or 40 arrows. I had a, a lot of resources to shoot him with. 
And uh, I'm just, you know, keeping the distance. I use the bounce webs really, really effectively, along with the aphid slippers as a combo, just to get around the arena, like, incredibly quickly. I was so fast. No one could catch me. Um, the bounce web, um, it just it, if you hit them just right and you know how to use them, you can just get anywhere you want. And then, you know, it all concludes in an epic melee brawl. You have Sir Simulot here blocking with his Antlion Greatsword, but you can't perfect block forever. And I switch to the fists and punch him in the face because I know, obviously, he can't block it and he's on very low health, meaning that the game is over. I take that round three to one, which means I win the first of the semi-finals. The second semi-finals, which I'm not going to cover, finishes 3-1 to Sir Simulot meaning that Sir Similot's on four points, I am on three points, and Bald Zebra is on one, heading into the final round, which means if I get two points in this final round, then I qualify for the finals. I don't even have to win. I just have to get two points, and I qualify for the finals of the event. Okay, so round one starts, and instantly, Bald Zebra just tries to chase me down. He throws the spear at me. He goes for the fists technique. You know, he stole that one from me, and uh, he's just chasing me down. He thinks he can do the damage. I decide to pull out the fists. He hits me really hard with a full combo from a spiky sprig, which really hurt. Um, again, on my screen, I'm blocking it. But on his screen, like, he's just hitting me every single time, which is is crazy. I guess it's just that, that ping difference. Um, but as far as I'm aware, he's NA West. So he was very close to them. So he had, like, relatively low ping. And uh, obviously, I'm on the other side of the world which um, was was interesting. I'll explain more about that later. But, you know, I'm just running around here. My goal in this first round was to gather all of the loot from the arena to minimize the loot he has and maximize the loot I had. I had also memorized where both crossbows were. I memorized where the um, roly-poly helmet and chest plate was as well. So I'm just trying to buy myself some time to loot all of those chests. And then once I have looted them, I'm trying to buy myself some time to equip all of that gear. But he does not let me catch my breath, let me tell you. He just keeps chasing me this entire round. He's just on me the whole time. He does not let up on the pressure. Uh, but I know with all the loot I have, even if I lose round one, I'll be able to equip all the gear in between rounds. And then going into round two, I'll just be far superior. But I still didn't want to lose a point here, just in case. So my goal was to make sure that I win this um by giving myself a chance to to loot um and then equip the gear at some point during this round eventually i just decide that i aren't, i'm not going to get time to equip my gear and he hasn't equipped any of his so i just go in i block his attacks from the spiky sprig and now that he's out of stamina i just go in and finish him off with the black ant sword he i could tell he ran out there um if you look right here you can tell he runs out of stamina because he hits two hits and then he just doesn't do the third which i it's just a telltale sign he's got no stamina left um and he walks away instead of sprinting away. So instantly, I know he's out of stamina. I go in, finish him off with the Black Ant Sword, which puts me 1-0 up. This means that I just need to win one more round out of the next four rounds of PvP, and I'll have qualified for the finals. So at this point, I'm feeling a lot more relaxed. I have some really, really, really good gear in my inventory. As you can see, Bald Zebra doesn't equip any new armor. He's just sticking with his basic armor. I now have a roly-poly chest plate and helmet, which is the best gear in the arena in terms of defense, which means I have a huge advantage going into this round, um, which was mostly his mistake that he didn't loot any of the good stuff. But that was kind of his plan was to try and kill me early on in round one, and it just didn't work for him, sadly. So here again, I'm just trying to play the range because even though I have way better armor, um, the ping difference is pretty difficult. So I'm just trying to play the range, get those crossbow shots in to lower him down before I go in at, ra at close range to try and finish him off. As you can see here, he threw his axe and it got stuck underneath the stairs, which wasn't great for him because that was pretty much his only good piece of loot. So he tries to loot the axe back from under the stairs and I go over and I'm like, yeah, you're not getting that axe back, buddy. So I just finish him. I just, you know, I'm just hitting him in the back nonstop. He's got a spiky sprig. He's out of stamina here, so he's running away. I pull out the crossbow, shoot him in the back to finish him off, taking the round and qualifying me for the finals. Um, we didn't have to play on here, but Bald Zebra, you know, he was a very good sport and he decided to, that he wanted to continue to um, see what the final score would be, uh, whether it was going to finish 3-0 or whether he could make the comeback and win 3-2. So we decide to go on for a third round to, uh, to see the uh, outcome and get the, the final leaderboards, so to speak. At this point, I'm not really worried about losing, so I start overcommitting a lot more and... Um, you know, I take a lot more damage, but it doesn't really matter. Like I say, I could literally lose all three of these rounds and I still make it to the finals. So I'm, I'm chilling. I'm just messing around, jumping around, having some fun, throwing my sword. I think he actually grabs it here. 
But, you know, he can have it. I'll, I'll kill him without the sword, you know what I mean? I don't need no weapons. I pull out the uh, the Red Ant Club or the Fire Ant Club instead. I think that's... Uh, I can't tell, to be honest. I think it's a Fire Ant Club. I just go in with my fists here. I'm just punching him like crazy. He's taking a lot, a lot of damage. He can't get out the way of the fists. And uh, I know for a fact I have him really, really low here. He's on 1 HP, as you could see there. I chase him down, finish him off, and it finishes 3 to 0, heading into the finals. Now, the finals is against this bozo here. His name's Chris. He's decent at the game, I guess. So, the finals, the rules completely change. So, instead of it being a first to 3, it's now a first to 4, or a best of 7. And uh, you get limited heals each round. There's no loot in the arena. You just pick loot from the locker room. Now, this is very different to the style that was played throughout the entire tournament. They just switched it up last second. Um, but I had practiced a lot in these kind of arenas, uh, in this kind of style where you pick your gear before you enter. So I was used to this. Uh, the one thing they did change is you were only allowed one one-handed, one two-handed, one bow and a shield. So you were very limited on what you were allowed to use during the fights, which actually did make it very difficult because it counted, meaning I couldn't use my thrown spear technique as the best weapon in there was Assault Morningstar, and I have to use a one-handed weapon, because otherwise I'll just get hit like crazy, I won't be able to block any attacks, because I need a shield, obviously. So, I had to go in with Assault Morningstar, meaning I couldn't use any thrown spears. I also couldn't use my crossbow, because even though there was a crossbow in there, um, Chris wasn't a moron. He knew that you could block crossbow attacks if you just held down your shield the entire time, meaning I was unable to do any damage uh, to him when using the crossbow. So this left me with just Assault Morningstar and an Antlion Greatsword as my two-handed close-range weapon. And um, this basically proved to be uh, an impossible task. The reason this is an impossible task is even though I have the better armor, there's also no Aphid Slippers in the arena, which I've been using this entire time. Um, this is basically a battle of Salt Morningstars, right? You think, yeah, okay, Salt Morningstar, cool. It's... Um, it, it's a cool weapon, like, you should just win this, you've, you've beaten everyone else in the tournament, yet you're wrong. Um, the reason this goes completely horribly is because Chris is somewhat good. I can't hit him with crossbow shots because he knows how to use a shield. We both have the exact same weapons. He has slightly worse armor, but it doesn't make a huge difference. But I can't perfect block anything. Uh, for reference, the devs that are hosting this, who are on the computer next to Chris... So he's on maybe 10 milliseconds ping maximum. I'm on um, about 150 milliseconds of ping uh, because they are in Los Angeles and I am in the UK, which is a long way away. And I know the first the first question a lot of people raised with this is, well, why are you complaining about the ping in the finals? You had this ping issue the entire time you played. Uh, yeah, I did, but it didn't make as much of a difference against most opponents. Carnage, who I fought and beat 3-1, was also from the UK, so we both had the same disadvantage. Tiny, who I fought and beat 3-2, is NA East. So again, I just about beat him using ranged weapons. I didn't do any melee combat because I couldn't block anything, and I barely beat him. Uh, when it comes to the finals, you'll notice both the games we just watched earlier, I was using a crossbow 99% of the time and keeping my range because I knew I couldn't do any damage at melee. The only time I could get in on the melee was when I had them weak, which was very difficult to do when you can't get the crossbow shots off in the finals. So what ends up happening here is I, I just get obliterated, to be honest. I end up losing 4-1. I'll, I'll spoil it. There's no point watching through these rounds. Um, it, it just is a demolition, to be honest. The only round I won was because Chris was messing about, pulling out a crossbow, doing some, some funny little dance, and there was just nothing I could do. You can see I get stunned there because I'm blocking with my shield, and it just doesn't count as a perfect block, and uh, I end up losing. Now, for those of you who are just going to um, call me a moron and tell me I'm just bad at the game and that he's just really, really good, I have uh, this clip, which this is a fight hosted by Rambo Robbie. Um, he is EU. He lives um, relatively near to me. He's in the UK as well. So um, when we are playing this fight, I decided, you know, I'll give myself a challenge. Let's fight someone who's really, really good at PvP to prove that ping is the determining factor. I competed on Robbie as the host. So I probably have a 20 to 30 millisecond ping. And my opponent is a guy called Freezy. Now, if you haven't heard of Freezy, he's basically the BCW champion. Not only is this man amazing at Grounded, 
He has never lost a fight in the BCW, which is a best of five format. He has never even lost a single round in the BCW. He's never been beaten once. Not a single round has he ever lost. He's 3-0'd every opponent he's faced. I want to make that very clear. The gear we had here was slightly different to the gear that we used in the finals of the Backyard Brawl, but very similar. I had a full set of roly-poly armor. I have a Broodmother Club, a Stinger Spear. Um, I think I had a Scythe of Blossoms. I don't think I used it, though. Um, the Salt Morning Star and, you know, very, very similar gear. Now, he is in a East connection. So he has a slightly worse ping here, but it should only be about a 100 millisecond ping. So he's on 100 milliseconds. I'm on about 30. When the CGBB finals was going on, Chris was on about maybe 10 milliseconds maximum. They were on the same router and I was on 150. So it was a much bigger ping differential. So as you can see here, the fight gets underway. Me versus Freezy. First, I just back up. I'm just feeling him out. He's going in with that broodmother club. But what he doesn't realize is I can perfect block attacks because we're on EU ping now, which gives me a huge advantage. I'm not going to get hit, which, you know, people don't understand how big of a difference ping makes. You are going to see in a second. But, you know, I'm just filling out to begin with, throwing a few spears around the arena, putting some hits down and uh, going in with that salty morning start as well, just to put some damage in. As you can see here, he's actually getting off quite a good number of perfect blocks considering the high ping but um, he still is on less ping than I was on in the event. Uh, I've played on Tiny's ping, actually. I fought Tiny a few times in preparation for the event, and um, that's a similar ping to what he's on right now, and I actually wasn't terrible on that ping. I was able to block a few attacks, but it's still impossible to perfect block a full combo on that sort of ping. Um, it's hard to explain, but it's just not possible, really. He keeps throwing a Coltana at me. I don't know why he's doing that. A bit of a weird thrown weapon choice. It does do a lot of damage, but um, it virtually never hits because it's such a slow throw and I know how to block thrown weapons, obviously. I know the mechanics of PvP and grounded. As you can see, this, this round is lasting a long time. We're both just feeling each other out in round one. I'm trying to gain just minor, minor advantages and make sure I don't get hit by the third attack from that broody club. I stun him and I get a good number of attacks in with that Salt Morning Star while he's stunned. I now have him really weak, but I'm also really weak. And then I throw the Salt Morning Star in his face and I take the first round. Bearing in mind, this guy has never lost a single round in his life, let alone a fight. I was still on half health at the end of this round. Let's head into round two against this guy. I do think Freezy is better than me at PvP. The only reason that I'm winning these rounds is because of the high ping. I want to make that very, very clear. He's very, very good at the game, but it's also impossible for us to know who's better because we can't fight with fair ping because we're so far apart. It's just, there's no one in the middle of the ocean that can host the game, unfortunately. Okay, we go in for round two here. I'm feeling a lot more calm now. My goal fighting Freezy was just to win at least one round, just to prove a point that one, he can be beaten, and two, ping does make a difference. So I'm feeling a lot better going into this round, a lot more relaxed knowing that, you know, I can compete with the very best pvp -er in the game when it's on EU ping which is a big discrepancy to be noted. This round, you know, it all goes terribly for him, to be honest. I hit him with a thrown spear, and then I go in with the fists just to try and finish him off. I know he can't block the fists. He can't escape. He's now on about 10% health. I, I think I've yet to be hit, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I haven't been hit yet. So uh, I have him really, really weak. The only way he wins this fight is if he either hits a thrown Coltana or if he hits me with the Club of the Mother Demon, uh, on that third attack, which is a one-hit kill. Um, although I think we were on Woe difficulty, which slightly changes things. It doesn't make it a one-hit kill, but it's still very, very strong and could turn the tide of the fight if he hits it. I just let him put down a combo. Then I chase him down with the fists, finish him off. Boom. Flawless. I didn't even get hit once in that round. This guy never lost a fight in his life. I just killed him without getting hit a single time. Currently, 2-0, to zero, moving into round 3 against the greatest PvP -er in Grounded. How's it going to go? Let's find out. As you can see, I land another Stinger Spear in his head. That does about half to three quarters of his health, depending on what difficulty you're on. But because we're on Woe, well, I'm pretty sure it does about half of his health. So now I have him weak. Uh, and I'm just going to go in, you know, throw some hits down with that Salt Morning Star. I get him stunned onto a knee, and I finish him off. 3-0. to zero. 
against the greatest PvPer in the game. But it was because I was on EU Pink. To conclude this video, I want to say a huge thank you to the devs for inviting me, and a huge thank you to the competitors for uh, giving me such a strong challenge. Um, I would also like to say, Chris, I would love to give you a fair fight at some point where we both have um, the same ping. I don't know if that's possible, because even if we played on NA East, I think I still have like about a 100 millisecond ping. I think you'd have like a 50, but I'm not sure exactly. So um, I don't know the numbers on that. But if we could get a fair fight at some time, it would be a really, really good idea to try and do that. Um, in terms of events going forward, I did suggest this before the event even started. I would love it. If, if they do future events, my recommendation would be you do it like um, any footballing event you've ever seen, like the Champions League group stage, for example. You would have a home and away venue. So um, they would find someone from West Coast America, from Central America, uh, from the East Coast of America, and from Europe. And those four people would host the games for them. You don't get the people who are playing to host, because that would be an unfair advantage. You get a person from each region... And you say it was me versus Chris. Uh, so, oh, not me versus Chris. Let's say it's me versus Bald Zebra, who is NA West. So, when we, we would fight twice. Once, we would fight on Bald Zebra's ping. So, you, the devs would host the world, because they are also NA West. And I think Bald Zebra is NA West, too. So, the devs host the world. We go in. We do, like, a best of three. So, first two. And then, whoever, whatever score that is, we then go on to another host. Let's say Rambo Robbie, because he's EU. And he I know he works with the devs and he mods some of that stuff. So, let's say he's hosting EU. That gives me the ping advantage, then. And then, we would do a best of three on that, as well. You combine the scores. And then, um, you, you basically add those points in the table. And whoever finishes top of the table qualifies for the finals. And you do the same thing in the semi-finals. And then you do the same thing against Chris in the finals. Where he, uh, where the devs host some of it. And then you get someone who's on the same ping to host the uh, secondary round. Because I think it would have made a big difference. Once you get to like the higher levels of the PvP. The people who like really know what they're doing. Because Chris clearly knew what he was doing. He was very good at PvP. Um, it was just hard to know. Um, how good he was when I can't perfect block any attacks. So my main suggestion is just that they change it up like that so that they can at least have multiple hosts from multiple regions to make it more fair for those who live further away, like uh, me, who lives in the UK on the other side of the planet. To be clear, I loved this event. I had a great time participating in it, and uh, I really appreciate the devs for inviting me. Uh, I would love to come back and participate if there is a, another one in the future, uh, hopefully a more refined tournament style that is fair for everyone competing, um, for those like me who want to compete not only for fun, but also to actually try and win and become the champion of PvP in Grounded. Because I really did want to win, I did do a lot of practice, and I felt like I was uh, very much ready, but clearly I didn't win. So, for now, Chris is still the champ, but hopefully the tournament format changes next time, and I will win, and I will take that crown for myself. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like on it, and I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.